Hey yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Grandmaster, back at you for another video. And this one, I've had a, this idea for a while now, and I just figured enough time has gone by, I'm start, starting to get my whole setup going, and we're gonna start doing weekly, kind of like, glass recaps. Uh, just art that I find interesting, things that I flag, stuff that uh, I just wanna share with you, kind of like a central news kind of uh, deal, because I just kind of figured somebody would have done this by now, but I don't really see any type of like weekly recaps of different artists and different just like things in the glass community. So I'm going to start putting in the effort and I'd like to try to make sure I do this once a week, try to do it Sunday, Mondays and uh, kind of get into the groove of it because I really do like making video content and uh, just trying to connect with you guys what I find interesting, things that excite me and, and brighten up my day and give me inspiration so uh without uh any uh without anything else let's uh jump right into it though actually before we get going if you don't know who i am i run the glass page grandmaster glass i'm a glass artist uh along with many other things i'm a multifaceted artist i have a lot of different interests and that's one of the reasons why i've started my youtube channel I'm trying to culminate all of my ideas into one location, just having fun and trying to share with you guys. Uh, I go by Grandmaster, GMG, or you can just call me Potter. So uh, let's jump right into it. Grandmaster Glass. So to start off today's video, uh, I've got about maybe like 10 or 15 artists. And uh, we're starting off with a Texas-based artist, Allure Glass, and his dot work, uh, amazing, absolutely amazing. So with some of these, it's just like different color styles and just different like textures in the dots. For me, I think the the, the pink one probably reminds me of like a, a lemonade almost, like a, a cherry lemonade. So that one really connects with me. This one is like a watermelon. Uh, yeah, and his dot work is super, super amazing. He has a crisp, crisp opal in the center. Uh, also, I'm going to turn this on for my mouse. Bam. So you can see where I'm also clicking. Uh, he is, like I said, a Texas-based artist. And uh, I met him once. Very, very cool guy. Very humble. Does great work. Quality work. And uh, he recently had been injured, and he's just now gotten back on the torch and getting into the swing of things. So it's good to see him back on it. But these huge, huge opals in the center to just cap off these amazing dot works. Probably 600 dots, I would say. I know the most dots he's ever done on a piece is somewhere, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, somewhere around like 12, 1400 dots. So uh, that's a huge amount of dots for somebody to lay down on a piece. And uh, he just doesn't stop. I mean, combined, who knows how many dots that is. So uh, as well, on all of these, I, I snap these from Instagram. So uh, if you're ever interested in anybody I'm talking about, that is their exact Instagram handle. So you'll be able to look them up. And next on the list is Rogue Glass. He has been pulling out some really, really heady work. He switches up his style from time to time. And right now he's been making the deadheads. And he's included the lightning bolt opal, opal with crushed opal in the background. Absolutely phenomenal. It's almost like alien skull like I really really like that and the actually the background is really really cool that's one thing I like to see is just like different different backdrops and just things that you wouldn't normally see rather than just holding it in your hand or setting it on the table it's like this is some type of rock and it's wet outside so it's just like that's a that's an awesome picture to see so road glass holding it down and up next, uh, as well, sometimes I might butcher some of these names. Uh, I'm dyslexic and I'm just going off of what I think it says, but uh, I've been following her for a long time, never once talked to her, so I couldn't say for sure what her name is. But Dematrio Art, and I know it's a woman and her husband. She runs this page and her husband is also a glassblower, so I'm not sure if that's their last name or if it's her first name. But anyways, these are the really popular Terp, like Terp Pearls, Terp Spheres, uh, whatever you want to call them. And she's gone the extra mile and has these themed as like snacks and candies. And it's just such an awesome idea. She's made the like containers for them even. Cheetos, Twizzlers, Takis, Milk Duds, Animal Crackers, Rice Krispie Treats. It's like 
that that's some that's some art right there that's some really good uh some really good effort it just puts a smile on my face looking at him so I, i'm really glad i saw this picture and, and tried to clip it for you guys everything i'm going to be pulling for these videos it's going to be about like once a week so i want to pull current things that i see and that i save so these are all about a, a week or so fresh or old however you want to look at it this is a a a this uh this guy right here is firebug j he makes glass blowing tools and this is just an absolute joke or a meme but who knows it could actually come in handy but i've seen him sell funny little items from time to time and this is a like a pocket reamer a keychain reamer it's like that's the size of a lighter it's like that is so teeny tiny that's hilarious so uh i just thought that was something cool that i wanted to clip for you guys and show y'all and up next we've got oh, one of my all-time favorite creep glass he is og he's probably honestly one of my favorite artists uh i rock his his pendants are like my daily wear like they're awesome he was uh he's always stayed up on his auctions this is one of his dabber spear spears that he put up for auction uh it was for a buy it now 80 so that's a really good steal on his artwork sometimes they're sandblasted sometimes they just have different accents so I think this is ether with his sand, his uh, wood tech, but I'm not super positive. But I know like my pendant right here is uh, Agua Azul, Illuminati, and then his wood grain tech. Absolutely love it. One of my first heady heady pendants as well. Ah, Chad Lacey. Wow, wow, wow. It's like every time I see another piece, he's he's just switching it up. Different. There's so it's like oh yeah, he does the whales. No, no, he does like everything he's been doing dolphins orcas humpbacks it's just like you name it he's been rocking it out with a matching bubble cap probably a spinner cap and a d wall joint pushed in so it's like low profile keeps like the whole like artistry down so i think that's really really beautiful uh yeah just the the way his eyes are shaped is just something something out of this world you know, it's just like, let's, let's get up in there. Where is it? Where we go? There we are. Something, something about those eyes just absolutely connect. Matching eyes on both. Super, super cool to see. Just the underneath the chin, the texture. If you've ever gotten a chance to see one of Chad Lacey's pieces in person. Crazy, crazy art. Yeah, up next we have got Hellraiser. He's been switching it up into his pendants. Uh, yeah not much more to say about that that the work speaks for itself the kind of secret geometry just rainbow patterns he's laid in opals into some of these corners that's absolutely next level just the color pattern and his color choices it's super super unique and you can immediately tell that it's like a hellraiser piece because he actually has like a i would say a pretty unique color color palette so for an artist and to just see that it's, it's really cool to just pick up on or whether you're a collector or an artist or just if it translates with you for the color pattern it's really cool to see uh the tree of life i really like that right there yeah i mean you could just stare at some of his pieces you could stare for like hours just because of the 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 detail in the geometry of all of his pieces so if you never followed him before or heard of him hellraiser 419 i'm guessing that's probably his uh his area code up next joel x yes sir out of this world art you know and his bales are super unique they're super long and skinny so it's like i i like to see different styles in in bales rather than being skinny or fat so uh that just starting it off i just like to see different uh different bales and things S different different accents to set pieces apart uh, you would think it was the most simplest thing but it it's clearly like if you weren't able to see anything else and you just saw this, you could name a couple different artists that do that style bail. And so you kind of know it's like, it's one way to kind of like relate to him. Moving on to his artwork, some of his planetary stuff is crazy. He's got the one, two, three, four, five, six sextuplet triangle force going on. That's like, Sometimes he'll do like little uh, posts where he's working on a piece and I actually saw him working on this one. I wish I would have snapped a shot of that. But uh, the way he inlaid those first and then he builds the pattern onto the, the, the glass, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Joel X killing it. 
And up next, we're getting into the videos now. This is Glass Maze. I have one of his pieces. His work, it's glass etching. And once again, very distinct style bail. He has been killing it with some of these pieces. The inlaid opal into the center. The patterns around the outside and on top. Just completely pulls the piece together. If you can tell, he's got like uh, an embossment. I don't think it's a, it might be, excuse me, it might be an etching, but I'm thinking it's an embossing of his like date and logo and name on the back. I think that's just one of those like finishing touches that's super, super clean. Yeah, the opal in the center hits so hard. Yeah, Maze 2020 with this logo. Glass Maze underscore. And I, I would say that color is like rose. I'm not even too sure. It's like a creamy gold rose peach color. This is definitely very unique. Kind of like in this, this pattern, he does lots of different like tribal, Celtic, you know, Native American. He does a lot of different patterns. This one kind of reminds me of like a Celtic kind of like Viking logo. But uh, yeah, if you know what, what that style is, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, up next, my boy Sherlock Holmes. He has been hitting it hard. He has got a huge shipment of mood mats. I just felt like this was worth, you know, letting everybody know about. I'm hyped for him. He's got a bunch of stickers, glass lollipops as well. He is only going to be selling his mood mats with the rigs that he's, he's going to be having for sale. But mood mats themselves have his mats on sale. So you can go to their website and pick one of those up if you really, really needed one. I'm going to have to hit him up and grab one myself because those are awesome. Teddy Bear Mafia, Teddy Bear Squad. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Son of Darby Holmes, Sherlock Holmes, Darby Holmes. If you don't know him, now you know. Go look him up. Up next on the list. Ah, now we're into the heavy, heavy art. Elbow with a fresh drop. Man, that is a Yushin elbow collab. We're going to see in the next couple posts, uh, we're going to be getting into this one. This is absolutely a heater. I mean, the time and effort that goes into it, we'll be able to see in, a, in, a, in the next picture. It's faceted all around the sides. It's much more detailed than you would first imagine. And just just the size and assembly of something like that is, <laughs> is crazy, actually. As well, this is all for a show. I believe it was at the Cave Smoke Shop. Uh, I'll double check in a second. But this is one that he did with uh, Pipe Maker, AKM. I mean, with his legendary Millies. The skulls have like a clear spot through them. And then Elbow worked the entire milli chip stacks into a Dino Rex. Oh my goodness. Probably a 10, maybe a 14 mil. The classic rainbow eyes. And his teeth and his mouth have just not slowed down. I and mean, they just get better and better with every piece. It's got the tongue in that one. Oh hell yeah. I didn't even notice the tongue in this one. And the, the skull Millie is perfect in the back of his throat. Yeah, that is absolutely insane. So this is where we start diving into it. And this is where I want to show you a few things, you guys. This just, I love to put things in perspective and to like know what, what you're working with and what, what the value of something is. So to start it off, and it's going to be kind of hard to tell on, on an iPhone or I can zoom in real easy. Let me know in the comments if you can see what that price tag is. So moving through, yeah, like I, I like I said, it is at the Cave Smoke Shop. Some uh, elbows pendants. And then uh, looks like he's got a classic Yushin elbow collab. That is insane. Then we've got some dry pipes. We've got another pendant. Two pendants. Now we start getting into the really, really heavy shit. So we've got a Raptor. Closed mouth raptor, open mouth raptor. And then over here we've got the new style Stegosaurus. And if you can see right there. And then. Not sure if you can see that. Might be a little blurry. That says 
when I, when, it, when I see prices like that, it just really puts it in perspective, you know? These are prices and pieces and art not to be messed with, not to be underestimated. Now, I don't underestimate art like this. I know the value of it. But just to think about it is like, that one says 27,000. And it's not, it's not quite what I would expect. And it's something that's never gonna get made again, something that's not gonna exist anywhere else. And I couldn't even guess how many hours something like that takes. So it's, it's definitely worth every penny. But just to have uh, just a reality check and to know the value of something like that, $27,000 for that Yashin elbow collab. The pendants are going around 500 bucks. And then yeah, some of his other work is about nine to 12. But yeah, that's just something to be noted. I, I really do like looking at prices to know the value of something, to know what you're working with and what, what I'm looking at, you know? So uh, that's why they put price tags like that. Shout out to the homie taking the snaps, uh, posting them up. I mean, that, that's just for everybody to see. So I just, you know, screen record stuff that I see and I want to share with you guys. So uh, yeah, big shout out. Up next, we've got Huntington. Yes, sir, the legendary Huntington. Doing something a little bit different. I haven't seen him make a lot of millies. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe he's just a millie master. But it's really cool to see something different from him. It's with the legendary uh, Puntington wigwag eyes, rainbow eyes. And then, of course, he's got to be a Yoshi, some type of Mario character. So he's had a limited drop of 100 of these. So I've actually seen artists like Steve H do a dot implosion. And then once it finishes imploding, they pull it down to, you know, to a very limited pull. Rather than getting a huge milli cane pull and getting like a million, a thousand millis out of it, he's getting a hundred. So what I would imagine he did is do one of his classic Puntington line drawings, imploded a bit, and then stretched it and was able to cut it into a hundred slices. That's what I would guess he did, but uh, yeah, regardless, super, super cool. Anybody who was able to scoop one of those, legendary, one of a hundred. And this has to be probably the heaviest piece of the entire session that I'm showing you guys. This is butt glass. I mean, he makes stuff like huge chandeliers. I mean, complete detailed body sculptures. It's like some of the stuff he does. This, when I was seeing it, it's like he's probably holding 25 pounds, you know, in one hand. I really can't guess. It's like that is a lot of weight to be holding. He is doing with the gloves, so you you start to lose that dexterity of working with your hands. It's like that huge, huge punty on the back end. I couldn't imagine. I mean, it absolutely blows my mind. I, I hope you value being able to see stuff like this because the fact that Buck shares his artwork, finishing off pieces like this and does demos, bar none, top of his game. And it's like, I'm not quite sure what this creature is. Obviously, it's some type of bird, but... Yeah, it's, it's absolutely insane to see him doing this. And it's like, he once you realize and you're looking at the video, he doesn't have a table. Like, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no table around him. So he's, like, working completely free of any limitations. He can, like, it's like a dentist stand or something. So he's free to work this piece in every imaginable angle. And it's just really inspiring to see stuff like this, really to think outside the box. And whether you're an artist or just an enthusiast, somebody who loves art, it's super cool to see stuff like this. So uh, yeah, I know there's uh, a couple more pictures towards the end. Yeah, some still pictures. And with his belly and this rib cage around. Yeah, that is a functioning rig as well, super cool. I wasn't sure actually at first if it was or not. I mean, wow. And there it is in the garden. Crazy butt glass if you've never seen him. Moving on, legendary Mike Shelbo with a crazy sprinkle tech. So this is like some type of purple mixed with a like a metallic shine sparkle color, like disco sparkle mixed with a transparent purple. Super, super custom. Haven't really seen anything like this. I've seen Ryan Fit do a few things. Uh, I actually a long time ago asked him about it. That's what he told me. It's a disco sparkle blown into like a gold ruby. This isn't gold ruby, but uh, yeah, same idea. And the the fact that it's got that Millie inside the mouth, I didn't catch that at first. And then you saw me zoom in. How 
how hilarious is that? Going outside the box. And here's another artist pushing the boundaries with his Millie's. Punzington, everybody's kind of got their, their thing and to actually have their logo Millie stamped into it. That's a pretty good idea. I really like that. That's hilarious though. I know Firefly has got some Millie's. Big Z has a, uh, back in the day in like 2013, 14, he was making Millie's of his own name and putting them on his piece. I thought that was really legendary. So uh, it's definitely not a, not a new idea. It's not an old idea. It's just cool to see people implement that idea into their work. Mike Shelbo, if you don't know, now you know. And uh, one, uh, nope, this, we've got this piece and one more piece to round off today's session. So this is actually salt and, uh, and no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say salt. This is Lions and Brandon Martin. Super, super cool slug. And at first I wasn't quite sure what it was, if it was like a, uh, like a pendant, or then I was like, is it a, like a flat top cap? And nope, it's got a mouthpiece. So then I was realizing it's just like a snapper bowl. It's a real small like slug, sli uh, slug, a lime slug uh, snapper bowl. So uh, yeah, Brandon Martin, some of his creatures, and it's like something like a drawing from a book. So if you don't know who that guy is, we're definitely going to cover him in another episode. But something about his characters are almost like you know cartoonish from a from a drawing as a kid. And Lions is the classic, you know, uh, lemon slices. So to see their two works come together into this like lemon slug or this lime slug, super super cool, brings a smile to my face. So uh, Lions Glass, if you don't know, now you know. Ah, uh, and we're coming to the last piece of today's session. This is besides the elbow and the uh, pipe maker and the Yushin, To me. This is actually, this is why I saved it for last. This is the craziest piece of the session. When you actually start to think about it and all the add-ons and details, it's like, I really, really like sculpture work. That's that's where my passion is at. And to kind of bring this like pop art, street art kind of feel to glass, absolutely cool. But we have got the dripped out honey bear with Coil and Joe P. And so you're starting to see some of the texture on it and you're like, wow, that's really, really cool because it's like honey and like bees and you you just kind of get the whole concept. And then you start really, it's like tech, it's, it's like embossed, it's carved. It's not just, you know, it's not just smooth, it's not flat. And then I, I really start to think, I'm like, how is that even possible? Like what's going on here? And then he's got like a little uh, Millie, uh, honeycomb Millie on his foot. I thought that was a really cool feature. The waffle, uh, the waffle slices in his hand is really, really clean. But to get this texture, it makes sense. He glass carved this entire bear. I don't know if Coil did or Joe P. I'm guessing Joe P did. That is absolutely insane. So if we think about the value of that Yushin elbow recycler i would add the value of this a time and a half to have cold carved oh this whole piece i mean this is like i mean all all the work that these people do is is museum quality work the millie the the honeycomb millie in his eye but to think about this is absolutely phenomenal i mean these guys legendary and it'll go down in history for sure some of these pieces and so sometimes they'll make a piece and not not actually show it. It's like if the artist or the buyer doesn't want it shown, they might not show it. So I think it's really cool to get to see all of the glass art because once something goes into somebody's collection, you're liable to not see it again. You know, it, it, it might be one of those things where the buyer just takes it, puts it in his in his case, and just doesn't show. The, I mean. How, how often do you see famous Picassos? If somebody buys it, they take it to their house. They're not gonna show it off every day. A lot of people you do because these are smoking apparatuses. These are pieces that you connect with with your friends and things. But sometimes people, I mean, if you're gonna spend 30,000 plus on a piece, I mean, you might not show it off the way you would, you would want to, or you might not show it off the way you would think somebody with it would show it off, you know? So it just depends. I mean, a lot of the pieces I do get to see on Instagram, but sometimes you just don't get to see them. So in something like going to live shows and seeing pieces that get made and sold, they don't get a chance to be photographed like this. So sometimes they don't get seen. So just the whole concept of this, uh, this weekly show, and I'm gonna be recapping so uh, we're gonna we're gonna round that off for you guys. 
So I hope you all have enjoyed this whole idea and me talking. Hopefully uh, I didn't bore you and you're interested in glass the same way I am. Whether you're a glass blower or you're just a novice or you're just somebody who likes glass or you're just finding out about it. Make sure you do follow me on my Instagram. It's going to be Grandmaster Glass. And make sure if you think I did a great job, like this video. Let's grow this channel together. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. I get, like I said, I'm going to be trying to do these consistently, weekly. I'm going to be getting into the swing of things. I really enjoy making videos for you guys. So if you think I'm doing a good job, let me know down in the comments. As well, comment question of the video. Which piece was your favorite? By far, if you could take one piece home, which would it be? I think you know which piece mine was, but what is your favorite piece? Which piece did you like, and who do you want to see me feature in next week's episode? What, what is an artist somebody needs to know about? What is an artist that everybody needs to know about? So other than that, guys, remember, never stop evolving.